right. Uh, the next <laughs> presenter <laughs> is I. Don't worry, <laughs> um, I'm sort of a bit of fun tonight because normally I sort of have some serious message and some gung ho right on activist type thing. But I thought tonight I'll just chill out and tell you a bit about uh, some of my artwork. Ready? Ready. So I had a precocious talent as a child uh, for drawing. And so when you're good at something, it tends to be encouraged and you get better at it. And then slowly you get better and better until eventually you develop a talent that people admire. And you get to a point where um, people are prepared to pay you for that talent or so whatever. And that can be applied to lots of other things, but in my particular case, you know, I can paint and draw. So uh, the, this was the funniest joke I ever saw. And it's by an artist called Oppenheim, it's not my work unfortunately. But what I loved about it was, can you imagine drinking a cup of coffee, uh, coffee out of this cup and sauce? It's like two opposing magnets being forced together. The ideas just freak me out. So I got interested in surrealism. Uh, this is one of the earliest works I did, and that was, this was before Photoshop, so you had to do everything by hand. And I had this idea that fighter pilots were somehow giant wasps that would, that would sting cities or something. Uh, this was a, a party piece I used to have where I used to take the shoe off and the way you put your foot in, I used to manipulate the, that bit and it looked like a mouth and made people yawn. And it was a huge joke, so I thought I'll turn it into a sculpture of uh, some faces. And I'm interested in where the edges of things, where the line is. So if somebody says, well, you know, a wicked keeper is supposed to guard the bales, at what point do they become imprisoned by them? So there's always that kind of grey area of, of overlap. And again, this is kind of playing with the idea of preciousness and ephemerality. You know, if the Mona Lisa, the most, probably the most famous painting in the world, was, were painted on a denim jacket, would, would, would the people actually wear it? I had a, a cartoon strip uh, that appeared every week in a now performed music paper called Sounds, if anyone remembers it. And it was called Life and How to Live It. And uh, that, that paid money, so that was good. And I also learned a lot about uh, life and outlooks and things. And I was interested in fame. And so I thought, okay, I'll have this idea where if I paint myself with famous people, I might become famous by association. Does everybody know who that person is in the painting? <coughs> Tell us about it. Excellent. You're of the right generation. So I did a series of paintings where I appeared with famous people. And I'll say the idea was uh, that um, I would you know, go first. Again, this was before Photoshop. Now I can do it in half an hour, but then it was weeks and weeks of work to put these things together. Um, this was after Kennedy died, obviously. The previous painting with the Beatles, that was before John Lennon died, so it was prescient. Anyway, uh, so now I made my, uh, well, most of my money from doing live caricature. And I, and I meet famous people as well, so uh, it's turned out, you know, it beats working for a living. <laughs> so, you know, if you've got a talent, develop it as much as you can, because at some point somebody's going to say, that's great, you know, I'll pay to see that, don't I do studio work as well, uh, this is for Jonglers, their Christmas menu, uh, it's a bit of shameless self-promotion there, and should be be allowed, but, yeah. but anyway, uh, so uh, that's, uh, you know, that's how I extend my talent. This is a presentation I do called Saturday for the Soul, uh, again, I play around with the idea of, of what's allowed and how you can break the rules or whatever. Uh, this is one of my favourite images because I use street signs uh, uh, throughout. And this is, uh, again, some surrealist sculptures that I've produced. Uh, both the chair and the tap are now utterly useless by putting them together like that. But there's, some, there's something, something really liberating about seeing images like this. This is my um, razor blade light switch. <laughs> yeah, you know, minimalism has reached such a pitch that it's now uh, form over function and you slice your finger end off every time you want it to <laughs> the light. Uh, this is uh, an illustration from a story I've written for children. It's about um, a magpie that can't fly and has to walk everywhere, so it's got issues of disability and that kind of thing. It was actually inspired by seeing a magpie that didn't have flight feathers and just seemed to walk everywhere. I used to see it for weeks, but I'm satisfied. This is for a story that I tend to write, which is a metaphor about our technology, how we're immersed in technology, like warm water. But at some point, we're going to have to get out of this, this spa and, and, uh, and experience the biting cold of uh, the winter. This is a sculpture that I intend to produce. It's a, a 
analogy of the financial system, which is quite opposite uh, these days, which is basically a turd spray of gold. Because the fair currency, that's what it basically is. It's worthless trash. And this is uh, a piece about religion, uh, which is uh, religious, uh, especially Christianity, which is written by men, edited by men, and essentially it's, um, it's a voodoo kind of belief that keeps people in their place. So basically, that's, uh, that's some work that I've done.